All right. Uh, welcome uh, to this sort of experiment for me. Uh, this is the first of many uh, warm-up sessions that uh, you can do along with me. And uh, this first one is what well, I, I call it the Vince warm-up because my dad uh, did it with his studio. His name is Vince uh, for many, many years. And um, I've added a, a couple of little things that I think help navigate it. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is, uh, well, we're going to find a G. So, yeah, I got it. And you don't need your trumpet right away because the first thing we're going to work on is uh, what I call turnaround. And this is the air turning around, right? We don't want to ever have any time where we're holding our breath. So we're just going to try breathing in and then breathing right back out. And it helps if you use your hand and sort of think about it in time. So we're going to do two beats in. Ready? And... Real simple, just easy like that, right? And you can do it out of time as well, ready? Just as long as you're not holding your breath, that's what's important. So now we wanna start shaping that so that it actually could fit in the mouthpiece. Uh, in other words, we don't wanna just have nothing where we just, and then try to put it on the mouthpiece. So we're just gonna do a little mouthpiece buzzing, nothing much, and I, I like for it to be a round G, but whatever note comes out first, that's fine, so don't, feel like you uh, have to do it exactly on pitch with me. It's, sometimes it's hard to not match pitch, but here we go. So we're just going to, it's good if you sort of set up your mouthpiece ahead of time so that you feel like you've got even pressure, top, bottom, left, right, okay? And then we're just going to breathe around that, still with a pretty loose embouchure at first, and then gradually find where that embouchure wants to respond, okay? and then get closer and closer. Never fully preset. The air needs to be the last thing uh, that activates the embouchure. But, um, so we'll start from very loose and sort of get just some air through there. And then we'll try to find a place where it buzzes, uh, but never force it. It should always be easy, okay? So here we go, a couple of breaths like that. So I got some buzz, not a great buzz, but something happened. So now see if we can make that a little bit better. Yeah, that's a little better, right? And this is my real warm up, by the way. I haven't pre warmed up before this warm up. Uh, I, I think it should be natural and I think it's okay to not sound great at first, right? That's what we're trying to figure out how to do is sound better. So, um, so here we go again. I'll try to get it on there a little closer to where it's gonna start. And I'm forcing it to be that note a little bit, so I'm gonna let it go. Yeah, and that, then, then I can bring it back down. So we don't need to do a lot of this, right? Just to make sure that our turnaround is even and that it goes into a buzz. So one more time. And like I said, whatever note comes out. We don't need to do long, long notes here. We're gonna do long tones next. So uh, if, you, if you're still having trouble with this or if you, if you feel like you're adding a lot of pressure right at the last minute uh, or anything funky like that, Calm down, restart this section of the video and do it again. Or pause and just see see how long, it, sometimes it takes me 10 minutes or just going. Like that, just, just I don't wanna force anything, right? Just an easy buzz. But then we wanna move on to some long tones. So get your B flat trumpet out. Other, other warm ups will involve other trumpets uh, to some degree possibly. But uh, for now, we're just going to do a B-flat trumpet because that's what everybody has. And uh, now what we want to do is um, we're, we're going to do that same turnaround. No tonguing. We're never tonguing um, this whole warm-up. You're not going to tongue to start a note. Uh, we will tongue in the middle of some of the slurs later on, but we don't want any tonguing uh, to start notes. We want just breath attacks for this whole time. Okay, so uh, I'll try to remind you of that as we go through. But... Um, so yeah, so we're starting on G in the staff, 
right? And we're just going to turn around the air and we want to think about important, the, the important aspects, right? If you just do these exercises, you don't really get much better every day. So I want to think about certain things. So in between the long tones, I'll remind you of different things and then we'll just keep on going, okay? So uh, we also want to rest a little bit between our things. This wasn't very hard so far, but as we go through, we're going to rest a little more in between items until we feel rested. And you can always pause and rest longer, but don't skip ahead. Rest at least as long as I do. So here we go. We're going to do long tones starting on G. And the first one, I just want to think about what sound I want to come out of the trumpet. Or maybe actually what's better, uh, let's think about that turnaround we just established, and then we can check on the sound and we'll do some other things. So. Here we go. And always release into the air, right? Don't stop the note uh, with your tongue. Don't stop the air ever. Right? The air continues even past where the vibrations stop. Okay? So, okay. So that was, uh, I thought about the turnaround. I didn't quite get it perfect. So I'm going to think about it again on F sharp now. And we do this little half step um, just to change notes and change back. Uh, it, it sort of informs you more about how it, what's going to work over the whole range of the trumpet. So here we go, F sharp. some wobbles in my tone that's natural if you haven't played it all today your muscles are getting used to holding in this way so don't worry about it right just try to put the air more steadily through it so speaking of that uh, one of the things we want to think about is as we run out of air we need more support so this time we want to think exponential support as I run out right I need more and more and more and more until finally I'm done okay so not very much at the beginning exponentially more through the breath so now F certain parts that wobble for a second that's usually when my air has not done its job uh, in my support rather hasn't done its job to keep the air steady and my lips try to it, it, you're trying to help uh, but they're not very good at helping and so they, they quiver a little bit um, it also matters if you don't drink enough water which I haven't today um, but re regardless uh, okay, so now let's talk about sound. We've played three long tones already. We haven't th th thought about our sound at all. So this time I'm just going to imagine the sound I want. And if you do enough listening, uh, that should be a pretty good sound. If you don't listen enough to really good trumpet sounds, uh, you need to do that. But just imagine the absolute best sounds you can and then try to multiply that by 10, right? And then see what you can get of it. Or rather, don't see. Demand that that sound come out of your bell and then see if that happens. So this is E now. So that was a little bit better. Uh, one of the things that seems to help me is if I use an anchor tongue position. I've been working on that lately. Uh, you don't have to do it, but uh, long tones are a really great way to work in anything that you've been working on because they're very simple. All right, so uh, this time I'm going to think about getting my tongue in that anchor tongue position. If you don't know anchor tongue, it's where you put the tip of your tongue behind your bottom teeth and kind of like that. So uh, you're welcome to try that if you want. Uh, sometimes it helps in the buzzing portion. I should have mentioned it then, but uh, so I'm going to think about that, but you might just think about how uh, you want this to be really easy and just you're working on the ease of playing just one long note. So I'm going to shut up for the rest of these and I might 
uh, chime in every once in a while, but we'll do a bunch of them in a row. Normally, I wouldn't talk between them. So uh, this is E flat. And try to think about different things every time. Try to think of a beat while I'm doing it too, and rest for about two measures of four four in my head. It doesn't matter. your slides for C-sharp and D, right? to release into the air. Don't stop the air. If you don't get a note to come out right away, that's okay. Don't force it to come out. Just try again the way that you'd like for it to work. And usually that's a better option, right? So if that happens to you during while you're playing along with me, that's okay. Just hold it until I hold it, or you can pause and try until you get it and then re uh, uh, unpause. But anyway, we're down to A now. <laughs> thinking of different things. I'm going to think about tone. Right? I usually use up air faster when I think about sound, but it's also louder, uh, which makes sense. All right, two more. G. Oh, I didn't do A flat, did I? Oh, maybe I did. Anyway, never hurts to do more long tones. Uh, low G. Sorry. first valve, you need to stop there, right? You can't play any lower notes than the F sharp. You could do just F sharp, or if you have the uh, slide length, right, you can play a low F. So I, what I do is I put the slide, if you have one that's this long, you can play a solid low F, right? 
So I just do the G fingering again and the low F sharp fingering, but now it's all a half step lower. You could also just do it like a trombone. Anyway, all right, so that's long tones. And uh, hopefully it didn't wear you out too much. You notice that, uh, you know, my long tones are not perfect, especially at the beginning. And that's something that I need to work on. Uh, but when you're at the beginning of the day, you can't, you can't start your day by making things happen, right? You, you want to let your body find the best place to be and try to keep things there, okay? So that's, that's uh, why you don't want to, you know, you could, do, you could do another set of long tones if you really want a perfect set. Uh, and sometimes I do, especially at the end of the day, I do a whole other set of long tones just to increase my endurance, just to, it's a long time to play, especially if you don't really rest much in between, like, like what we just did. Um, and, but at the beginning I was talking a lot. So normally it'll take about five or six minutes to do this many long tones. And I actually usually start a little above that too. Uh, so you could start on a C in the staff, let's say, or a B in the staff, right? These are all trumpet pitch, of course. Okay. So now, uh, well, we've played one note at a time. Sorry, one note at a time. Uh, what's the next sort of logical step? Uh, and uh, my answer, at least, is two notes, right? We want to play two different notes now. Uh, because we've, well, we sort of played two notes because we went down a half step and back up. But, but a long tone implies one note is really sort of the, the focus. So now I'm going to play two notes. I'm going to play uh, a, a exercise by the uh, teacher Bai Lin. And uh, these are just very slow slurs. You want to start off one note and then slowly move to two notes and then we can do more than two notes and so on and so forth and just sort of expand from there. So uh, uh, one, if you've done this with me before, then you can just start right with me. Otherwise, uh, it's always the same, but it's just down a half step. So we're going to start on G then we're going to go down to F sharp. We're going to F and uh, you'll see. So I'm just going to go straight through these, but uh, I'll say something in between just to remind you to think about different things. Uh, for me, the first thing I'm going to think about is trying not to move violently to change notes, right? I want my tongue to do the work and I kind of want to be unaware of that. So I'm just going to keep my air steady and see if without really moving much outside of the mouthpiece um, or even inside the mouthpiece on my lips, can I move these notes? This should be relatively easy, uh, but you have to let your body figure out how to do it. If you've never done it before, that's okay. So here we go. This is the violin exercise. If you, uh, if you want to just start with me on the second one, that'd be fine. If this is not your first time watching this video, go ahead and start with me. After that just to get sort of loosened up I sometimes will play some little scales and things and uh, you can just play whatever you'd like so I'll continue on through uh, you want to think about I'll just give you all the things and then we'll go through the exercise because it's not very long uh, so I try not to move too much I also just I always always think about my sound and what I'd like it to be and then demand that uh, I want to make sure that my support is exponential like we did in the long tones and I want to make sure it's easy like the long tones and really every step of this warm-up we want to feel just like the last step as much as possible, right? We're building a sort of foundation and then a next step and then a next step on top of that and so on until we uh, get all the way up to high range. So here we go. Rest of the violins, there's only six more starting on F sharp.
might think about turn around on the breath in the, in the middle and try to make the tonguing as dis, as least disturbing as possible. As as dis, as yeah, you know what I mean, right? There's just that one little tongue's note both places. E now. <laughs> to just sort of play around with your major scales just one octave to make sure that they feel easy for you like i said you can play whatever you want or nothing after the exercise is complete uh okay e flat slides and uh, these we're doing alternate fingerings for B obviously or uh, yeah sorry for G um, and then low G has to be this so you might have to adjust your slides on on the fly and that's good just use your ear here we go D tapping my foot every once in a while I try to make the event happen on the trumpet and then I tap all the other beats when there aren't events just to sort of keep my mind straight uh, and keep my energy kind of going through so uh, one last one C sharp F sharps right again same thing as the as the D and G we'll have to adjust our slides on the fly but make sure the C sharp starts in tune too far out all right so that's the violin uh, sort of slow slurs exercise and uh, I, I feel like it's a good connection between long tones and lip slurs and really there's not much else you do on the trumpet uh, besides articulate and uh, we, we practiced a little bit of articulation in there uh, I tend to not have too much trouble with my articulation if I can get my air working really well so that's why it's not going to be included in this particular exercise uh, rather warm-up but um, feel free to add whatever you'd like. Uh, any routine while we're resting here in between exercises, any routine should generally cover all the things that you want to get better at every day. So uh, after I do this routine, I'll, I'll do a bunch of different exercises that are just for me right now that maybe are not for everybody, right? Um, or maybe I'll do some things that I haven't done in a while just to check on them. Or maybe I'll get right to practicing if I don't have any of those things, right? But uh, in general, if you want to get better at something, you need to be working on it at least every week and probably every day. Uh, and these are all things that I think apply to general trumpet playing. You know, just your ability to play one note really easily with a nice sound, um, your ability to move that note around so that it's not just one note, but now multiple notes. And then our ability next to do that more quickly and agilely 
I don't know if that's a real word, but with more agility, that's a better way to say it. Um, and uh, uh, we'll also notice that I don't, I haven't provided any music for any of this stuff. And what, that's one of the biggest things is that uh, because this is a video, uh, you can just watch it again until you really feel like you've got it. You can watch my fingerings. I know I have real bad hand position. Don't tell me in the comments. Um, it's, it's the hand position that works for me and I change it sometimes and that's just how it is for me. But um, this, this basically uh, also covers sort of a hidden objective and that is that we want to play by ear as much as possible. So if I don't write down all the notes for you, then it means that you have to intuit those notes with your ear and that you have to memorize that sort of pattern. And that makes you more conscientious about what you sound like. And it also makes you listen a little bit better. If you're not already doing so, uh, this is a much better uh, product with headphones because I'm using a stereo mic setup. You can only see one of them there, but, uh, and so you'll be able to hear the more complexities and all of the problems really if we're being honest in my sound uh, but it should give you a better idea of, of what it sounds like live okay so now just like the other exercises uh, I'll do one first and then you can continue along with me um, this next one I call Vince slurs because it's the faster slurs from my dad's exercise and I haven't seen them in this pattern in another book so I'll coach you through it once and then we'll do them so the first thing we do we're, we're basically going to play the normal range of the trumpet. So that's high G down to low C to start, and then we'll go down chromatically till we're down to low F sharp, just like we just did with the violin. And the first one is the middle three notes. The second one is the top three notes. Uh, the next one is the bottom three notes. And then we try to do a lip trill on the end. If you can't do the lip trill, that's fine. Just keep trying. Uh, but here, so I'll do each part, and then we'll do it all together. So the first part goes like this, excuse me. Okay, then the next part is the top three notes. Right, then the ne next part is the bottom three notes. And then just a lip trill on C and E. Right, so each section starts on C. If you get lost, just try to come back in. And then the other thing you can do is you can, if you want to, uh, for extra credit, so to speak, you can double up on the last iteration so that you do them twice as fast or even three times as fast for that last beat. So if you think of them in quarter notes, uh, or sorry, uh, 16th notes. So we're doing four uh, beats of 16th notes in each section. And it comes together quite easily after you've done it a few times. So just sort of try to sing along maybe and uh, then do some fast lip slurs on your own until you feel like you can do it on the trumpet. So here we go. We'll start still on C. And again, what are we trying to think about? It should be easy to move around. I don't want a lot of motion here, but some is okay. I want steady air, right? And uh, even pressure is another good one to add to this section. So here we go. trill didn't come out very well that's okay I've got six more to try next one B Sometimes the notes don't come out. That's okay. I can do again. I can I can go a little slower, or I can come back and get some things. But it's important to sort of trust your body to figure it out. So it's more. It, 
and on these types of exercises, it's better to just keep playing through the exercise and not worry about drop notes, right? It also trains you to do that when you're playing a live concert, so you don't feel like you have to go back for every note you miss. That's a bad habit, uh, and this helps us train. If I miss a note, I don't really care in this warm up. So here we go, A flat, a little faster. sharp we played with the wrong fingers right we're just going chromatically down so all three with the slides all right so that's fast slurs or vince slurs as i call them um, and again once you've done them for a little while uh, you'll you, you sort of find ways to do them easily and that's the point uh, you'll notice that I sort of I lay into the first note of each section a lot of times or I'll, I'll elongate the note right before I double up or and uh, sometimes I'll elongate the one right before the lip trill um, so that's some fast slurs now uh, you should feel pretty limber and pretty like warmed up like you could play if you want to and this would be a good place to stop uh, if you're not going to work on high range at all, but since high range is probably the most asked for uh, sort of help in lessons, uh, when I have lessons with a new person, they almost always say, I'd like to work on my high range um, because it's a problem. It, it, it is genuinely, diff genuinely difficult for people to figure it out, um, and, uh, and, and generally they just don't try long enough. So, um, if high range is an issue for you, especially if that exercise wasn't possible because you couldn't play high enough, like G on top of the staff, then uh, there's a lot of things you can do. I'd be happy to have a lesson with you and show you some things. But um, if high range is difficult for you, I would suggest the next exercise, which I sort of steal from the Arbenz book, but I do it kind of my own way. And uh, that is I start on C in the staff and I try to make it really easy for me to go between C and E. And then I play C sharp, and that's also going to be an E. That makes it a little smaller. Sometimes that works better. And then I go up to D, up to D sharp or E flat, uh, and just to the next partial, right? Just to try to make it easy. And so I go slow at first, and then I go faster and faster. And you can even do this as a precursor to the next exercise, which I often do anyway, uh, even if you can play quite uh, high. It's a nice way to get things sort of evened out so that you don't have to change your embouchure to play in that register or anything like that. So. What does that sound like? Sounds like this. I played F sharp on the top. I played F and A flat first valve, but then I played F sharp all three, right? And that means that that's a whole step up to G sharp. That's that gives me a better partial, and that becomes the basis for the next exercise. So if 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 high range is an issue for you, try to work on those slurs and get them really really fast, or even lower slurs than that. You can do G and B uh, one and three, right? Uh, you can do F sharp and A sharp, which we've sort of already done both of these, uh, all three, but just to make cl partials closer together and then try to make it really easy to, to go between those notes uh, without massive changes to your embouchure or anything. And it just takes time. It takes patience and time. And you want to really just it, focus on the air being steady and you'll get really, really far. So, okay. But so now we've done that exercise. So what's the high range exercise? Well, the high range exercise, again, from my dad's warm up. Uh, I don't really have another place where uh, this exists uh, that I know of, and so it's kind of unique, and it sounds a little crazy, but, um, but it's, it's, it's fairly simple. So I'll, I'll talk through it very briefly, and then I'll show you. 
So the first thing is to do an arpeggio up to that lip slur. So I'm gonna do an F sharp major arpeggio. That's F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, and then alternate fingering F sharp. And I'm gonna just try to get that lip trill to be really easy. <laughs> If it's not easy, you keep trying. And you can keep trying up the partials, right? G next, so G arpeggio with an alternate fingering, one and three. And if that's still, if the lip trill isn't coming out, you can just try on all those notes all the way up to high C. A lot of people can play high C but they don't feel like they're very uh, agile in that range. And so this helps with your agility and uh, as well as the previous exercises that I talked to you about. So work on, work on that and just, just, that's all you need to do. But if you're feeling really good about your lip trill, if it's really working, and uh, I say lip trill, we say lip trill because that's what we know it as. It's really a tongue position trill, right? Your, your lips are not trilling anything, they're just holding. A nice firm embouchure is what's required here. Uh, the tongue position will change very, very, like just, just a tiny little bit of the middle of it maybe uh, will change and that's what will change the note uh, as long as your support is good and your air is steady, right? And enough. They have to use enough air. Um, but it's not really that much. It's, it's a small, very fast amount of air. So we want to focus on air speed for this and, uh, and that's what's going to get the high range to work. So, okay, so let's say the, you're, uh, you've been working on it and you feel really good about your lip trills. Okay, so you still, in the exercise, you're still going to do that first lip trill part, but then after each lip trill, you're going to take a breath and you're going to do a scale that is sort of uh, a little, little wavy scale. So it looks like, it's, it'll sound like this. Just that much, sort of a, but with all the notes above them before. And what that's going to do is put the emphasis on the first note, and then the higher note is not emphasized, right? So a little triplet, and uh, and then yeah, if you want to, if that goes well, and you uh, want to go for it, then you just sort of shoot the air through the horn and see if you can get the octave. So I'll show you what that sounds like, and I'll do maybe three of them. So you want to rest a lot during this portion of your warm up. And that's the, the arpeggio at the end is optional. You don't have to do that. Um, but I like to just connect the whole trumpet range together. All right, let's try G. you rest a lot you don't want to crush your lip and then hurt yourself for the rest of the day or maybe week all right one more a flat you can do this all the way up double high c if that's what you'd like i try to go up as high as i can each day uh usually i can get a flat which is why i'm stopping there on the video but This is all on my normal uh, orchestral big mouthpiece, right? I'm not using a special streamer mouthpiece for that. Uh, if I do, it just locks in the partials better, but it really doesn't give me any notes that I don't have on my regular mouthpiece. So uh, that's the whole that's the whole warm up. Now I would normally rest about 10 minutes and uh, wait just for my lip to sort of you know feel a little better from the, the, trying things that are hard for you doesn't always feel good. So it's nice to have a little rest time before you go and. Uh, try to play your literature or your etudes or uh, more exercises or whatever. But uh, I, So I try to rest at least five minutes if I'm going to continue my routine and ten minutes if I'm going to try literature uh, after I do that exercise. But I hope this has been informative. Uh, this is the warm-up that I did for, oh gosh, 
I would say about 15 years every single morning. And uh, without any talking in between, I don't know what time we're up to now, but without any talking in between uh, and explaining things, it normally takes about a half hour. But do it with the video for a long time. Make sure that you're thinking about those things, at least at the very, at the very least, write down what things you wanna think of and have a piece of paper out. I have one right here um, that's telling me what to say in this video about each item. And uh, I keep a trumpet journal that tells me what to think about in general uh, because it's easy to forget and it's easy to just zone out, especially if you do that. You should do this warm up as early as possible in the day. I used to do it at 6.30 every morning before I went to breakfast. And, um, you know, it helped me a lot to be, to be already done with my sort of routine items before I had any classes or did anything for the day. So um, this is not in the morning right now, but it took me forever to get everything set up. So I hope that this helps and I, I hope that uh, you, you learned something and that you can uh, maybe piece together a really good routine for yourself out of parts of this or by adding to it. Uh, but thank you uh, so much. Uh, if you have any questions about this, my name is Gabriel DiMartino, and uh, my email address is quite easy to find. I work at East Carolina University and uh, run quite a few little digital studios these days. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I guess I'm supposed to say like, comment, and subscribe. So do that and share it with your friends. Thank you.